ye kızı. And now let's speak about theories a little bit. You know, at the time the biggest rival to Darwin was paleontology because of the lack of uh, fossil records. And in the meantime, it proved to be uh, his biggest ally for one of the most disputed theories, the uh, theory of evolution by natural selection. And what is your opinion about it? That who do you think had a more impact on each other, paleontology on Darwin or Darwin on paleontology? So even as a young kid in his 20s, Darwin was collecting fossils mm -hmm. in South America and sending them back to the British Museum under the tutelage of the guy who eventually named dinosaurs, Sir Richard Owen. Really? I didn't know that. So Sir Richard Owen was an amazing anatomist, mm -hmm. um, and they actually worked together. Darwin actually named um, some extinct animals from South America after Owen and sent them back. Uh, Darwin made some of the first geologic maps, and all of this is literally at, at about the age of 23. So he's just this young punk on a boat, but he's yeah. seeing data for the first time. I mean, one of, the, one of the biggest mistakes Darwin made is he went there and he recognized that the birds were different on each of the islands of the Galapagos. Mm. And that was awesome. Yeah. Right? But just like me as a student and my students today, he did not write down where each of the birds came from. Yeah, yeah. So he's got a collection of these birds at the British Museum. We know where they came from now. Yeah. But he it never occurred to him to write down which island it came from. He probably knew, hmm. but then he never wrote it down. So, you know, Darwin made all kinds of mistakes. But him looking at fossils and how fossils changed over time really made it clear to him that animals come and go. They go extinct, new animals arise, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, this fluorescence of life where animals come from a common ancestor and, and move out. This is something that Sir Richard Owen, who named dinosaurs in 1842, totally could not accept. Mm. And the two ended up being quite bitter enemies. So, like, the best paleontologist and scientist of the time, an amazing anatomist, just could not accept this idea of species changing over time and instead believe that they were specially created and somehow transported on Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. but, but yes, definitely. And one of the things that Darwin says in his original book, Origin of Species, which unfortunately never identifies what a species is, but that's another problem. Uh, um, but in The Origin of Species, he says, the, the best criticism for my arguments is the lack of transitional fossils. Mm. Yeah. The very next year, they found a feather in dinosaur rocks. Nice. That was Yeah, right. And then 1861, they found the first specimen of Archaeopteryx. Yeah. So he actually predicted that you should find transitional fossils between groups. Archaeopteryx was a good transitional fossil between reptiles and birds. I mean, it was a bird. It had flight feathers, it had wings, it could fly, but it had a long tail, it had teeth, it had separate bones in its feet, it had claws on its wings. So to them, that was a really good transitional fossil or missing link between birds and reptiles. Yeah. But then it took us all the way, really, till 1969 to actually figure out that birds actually came from dinosaurs. I mean, there were some hints at first, but people thought that birds were related to dinosaurs, but maybe not descended from. But uh, pterodactyl came after Archaeopteryx, am I right? So that's a different story. Mm -hmm. yeah. So pterosaurs, um, they're awesome, and pterosaurs... Of course you have one model. <laughs> I do, but they're not dinosaurs. No. They're absolutely not dinosaurs. No. You would get them in every plastic bag of toy dinosaurs. But a pterosaur evolved before or right at the same time as dinosaurs. 
and they share a common ancestor. Mm. So dinosaurs and dinosaur morphs in their group, their closest ancestors are the pterosaurs. But pterosaurs are outside of dinosaurs. Mm. They were almost likely warm-blooded. They have a very similar lung system and th things like that. But pterosaurs are not dinosaurs. So they start, we actually have older pterosaurs than we have dinosaurs. And they go all the way up to the end. Mm. And um, something happens to pterosaurs, all the ones that have long tails, disappear right when birds really start going crazy. Mm. So we think that birds evolved right around 160 million years ago. And by 130 million years ago, there were no pterosaurs with long tails. Mm. So maybe, you know, there's a correlation. And then pterosaurs eventually became giraffe-sized, living alongside T-Rex, and basically became so specialized that they, there was no way they were going to survive the, the extinction at the end of the Cretaceous. Oh, yeah. We stay genuine, uncensored, and unscripted, and we always will, as we have to order our usual. Share us, subscribe us, and stay tuned until the next Wednesday. Because